If you want to visit the largest desert in the world, it will bring you to Africa, as you can see on this world map. Come up north and you will see the massive Sahara Desert. It covers more than 9 million square kilometers, stretching from the Red Sea in the east and the Mediterranean in the north to the Atlantic Ocean in the west, including 10 countries – Algeria, Chad, Egypt, Libya, Mali, Mauritania, Morocco, Niger, Sudan, and Tunisia. However, under the sterile sand are many secrets, which scientists are still discovering as their tools get better, and some of them are terrifying and change everything, as we will show you in this video, so stay tuned. Did you know the Sahara once contained lush vegetation that would make the Amazon forest jealous? Scientists just discovered how humidity in the Sahara abruptly came to an end. However, to get to the root of this story, pardon the pun, we will go back sometime between 11,000 and 5,000 years ago. It was after the last ice age ended, transforming the Sahara Desert. Green vegetation grew atop the sandy dunes, and increased rainfall turned arid caverns into lakes. The area now known as the Sahara turned green, drawing in animals such as hippos, antelopes, elephants, and aurochs the wild ancestors of the modern domesticated cattle who feasted on its thriving grasses and shrubs. However, the story changed about 8,000 years ago and the Sahara's green shift started. This was due to the Earth's tilt changing. The tilt began moving from about 24.1 degrees to the current 23.5 degrees. That tilt variation made a big difference. Right now, the Northern Hemisphere is closest to the Sun during the winter months. This may sound counterintuitive, but the Northern Hemisphere is tilted away from the Sun during the winter season because of the current tilt. During the Green Sahara, however, the Northern Hemisphere was closest to the Sun during the summer. At any rate, the tilt led to an increase in solar radiation or heat in Earth's Northern Hemisphere during the summer months. The rise in solar radiation amplified the African monsoon, a seasonal wind shift over the region caused by temperature differences between the land and ocean. The increased heat over the Sahara created a low-pressure system that ushered moisture from the Atlantic Ocean into the barren desert. Usually, the wind blows from dry land toward the Atlantic, spreading dust that fertilizes the Amazon rainforest and builds beaches in the Caribbean. Usually, the wind blows from dry land toward the Atlantic, spreading dust that fertilizes the Amazon rainforest and builds beaches in the Caribbean. This increased moisture transformed the formerly sandy Sahara into a grass and shrub-covered steppe. As animals there prospered, humans did too, eventually domesticating buffalo and goats and even creating an early system of symbolic art in the region. What fascinates climate scientists about the Green Sahara is how abruptly it appeared and vanished. The termination of the Green Sahara took only 200 years. The change in solar radiation was gradual, but the landscape changed suddenly. It was an example of abrupt climate change on a scale humans would notice. And to the big question, can the Green Sahara ever return? The answer is yes. The Green Sahara, also known as the African Humid Period, was caused by the Earth's constantly changing orbital rotation around its axis, a pattern that repeats itself every 23,000 years. However, because of human-caused greenhouse gas emissions that have led to runaway climate change, nobody can predict when the Sahara will turn a new green leaf. Now, how about finding fish in the middle of the Sahara Desert? Sounds impossible because fish can't survive on the hot sand of the desert, right? Well, the fish found in the desert was long dead, and the scientists only found the fossil. How did the fish end up in the desert, and what does that tell us about the desert? Remember how the Sahara used to be green? Well, it attracted a group of people who scratched out an existence in Takakori. They left a trail of ancient food waste that holds the history of the Sahara Desert's climate in its bones. Nearly 5,000 years' worth of these fossilized leftovers were discovered in the Takakori rock shelter in southwestern Libya. It shows ancient humans' transition from a mostly fish diet to one that featured more land animals like sheep and cattle. These ancient people were human hunter-gatherers. Researchers from Belgium and Italy analyzed over 17,000 animal remains from the rock shelter. The bones were marked with cuts and burns, signs that they were cooked and eaten by humans. 
The researchers found that catfish and tilapia bones made up 90% of the finds from the first few thousand years that humans inhabited the shelter, starting at about 10,000 years ago. But of the more recent 4,650 to 5,900-year-old remains, only about 40% were fish bones and the majority belonged to mammals. Analyzing the bones further, the researchers found the number of tilapia decreased with time, possibly because catfish are better adapted to live in warm, shallow water. Previous research has shown that about 6,400 years ago, the Takakori Shelter's original residents, called the late Akakas hunter-gatherers, were replaced by people who used early agricultural practices. Research has found evidence that the pastoral residents cultivated weed-like cereal grasses and that pastoral groups around the rock shelter kept herds of domesticated Barbary sheep. That has led some experts to suggest that the introduction of domesticated livestock may have exacerbated the region's shift from the green Sahara to the desert seen today. However, critics suggest the transition back to a desert was inevitable. Nevertheless, the research provides evidence that regardless of whether humans influenced the creation of the desert, their behavior reflected the constraints of a rapidly changing climate. Now, the Sahara Desert contains miles and miles of arid sand, but once in a while scientists find intriguing objects apart from fish bones. This object found in the Algerian side of the Sahara Desert was actually older than Earth itself. It was a meteorite that landed in the Sahara Desert last year. It has been dated as 4.56 billion years old, making the volcanic rock older than Earth, which is approximately 4.54 billion years old. Named Erg Chech 002 or EC002, the rock is a rare artifact from a protoplanet that was likely forming when the solar system was 2 million years old. A protoplanet is a large body of matter in orbit around the Sun or another star and is believed to be developing into a planet. The magma that EC002 forms out of would have been at least 1,220 degrees Celsius and taken at least 10,000 years to cool and solidify. The team behind the findings, led by Jean-Alex Barrett of the Université de Bretagne Occidentale, France, speculates that this astronomical body would have been destroyed or absorbed by bigger, rockier planets as they formed closer to the Sun. The meteorite was part of a group recovered in May 2020 near Bur Ben Takul, southern Algeria, within the Erg Chech Sansi. The stones have a coarse grained tan and beige appearance interspersed with green, yellow green, and yellow brown crystals. They are igneous, which means they formed from molten rock or magma. A rock like EC002 is a relic from the solar system's early days. Most of the material from the time has since become a part of other bodies that have evolved to form planets or asteroids, from which we have plenty of meteorites today. No known asteroid or meteorite looks like EC002, indicating how rare the finding is and how these rocks likely do not exist anymore. The rock that makes up the meteorite is of a type called andesite, which is made of solidified magma or lava. These are found on Earth in subduction zones, where tectonic plates slide below each other and rock from the crust enters into the mantle of the Earth. Meteorites have rarely been found to be andesites. EC002 is classified as an achondrite, a meteorite that originates from a parent body with a differentiated crust and core, like the rocky planets. Achondrites lack chondrules, which are round, bubble-like grains of partially molten droplets that form in space when smaller bits of rock emerge. This piece of rock is believed to have come from the partly molten magma in its parent body's crust and is rich in silica, while most magma is rich in iron. So, you have heard of the famous stone formation known as Stonehenge, which poses lots of questions. The Sahara Desert has its own mystery stone formation too, and it is no less intriguing. Hundreds of these stone structures dating back thousands of years have been discovered in Western Sahara, Morocco, in a territory little explored by archaeologists. The structures seem to come in all sizes and shapes, and archaeologists aren't sure what many of them were used for or when they were created. About 75% of the Western Saharan territory, including most of the coastline, is controlled by Morocco, while the Sahrawi Arab Democratic Republic controls 25%. The stone structures are designed in a wide variety of ways. Some are shaped like crescents, others form circles, some are in straight lines, some in rectangular shapes that look like a platform. 
Some structures consist of rocks that have been piled up into a heap, and some of the structures use a combination of these designs. For instance, one structure has a mix of straight lines, stone circles, a platform, and rock piles that form a complex about 2,066 feet or 630 meters long. Though the archaeologists are unsure of the purpose of many of the structures, they said some of them may mark the location of graves. Little excavation has been done on the structures, and archaeologists have found few artifacts that can be dated using a radiocarbon method. Among the few excavated sites are two tumuli, or heaps of rocks that contain human burials dating back around 1,500 years. One type of stone formation is known as goulets by archaeologists. It has two rows of rocks that trail off into the distance. Goulets are sometimes located near other stone structures. Their purpose is unknown. The researchers hope to continue gathering data such as soil samples with pollen that might indicate when and where vegetation and therefore water lingered. Burial mounds containing more graves might provide evidence about what people ate, how healthy they were, and how they lived. But what they've studied so far already points to a couple of interesting conclusions about how people adapted to a changing world. Let's hear what you think of the discoveries in the Sahara Desert in the comments section below.